Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, we start with the new topic and uh, the first topic of this lecture that is hot deformation processes. So, in this lecture we will be introducing you to different hot deformation processes which are used in, in the industry ok. And uh, as you can see that uh, we are going to discuss the conventional one first ok and then in the next lecture we will be discussing the non-conventional one. The non-conventional one means the new type of hot deformation processes which are uh, now people are uh, devising new ways to give deformation at high temperature. So, in this lecture we will be discussing about hot deformation processes and I have kept it as a one and in this we will be discussing about conventional processes. So, the one of the most uh, used processes uh, which you can find in any industry uh, which uh, does material processing is what we call as hot rolling ok. So, the idea is that one idea is that you have to keep uh, reducing the size of the billet uh, size in the sense cross sectional area or the thickness of the sheet ok. So, from the after casting what you get is big billets or ingots ok and those ingots have to be processed initially and you want to impose very high strains ok to break the dendritic structure. So, when you want to impose very high strain as you can see that or you, you must be knowing from uh, your basic uh, understanding of stress strain curves that when you impose a strain it the material gets a strain hardened ok and it becomes uh, and when it gets hard and if you still apply very high stress then ultimately there will be some instability some cracking in the material. So, I cannot impose very high strain in one pass ok, but for to break the dendritic structure which you get during the casting you have to impose very high strain to break the structure. Okay, so, the initial processing of any material after the casting process is uh, usually done at a higher temperature and that is why these are called hot deformation processes or thermomechanical processes that means you have temperature as well as some strain is uh, introduced and these processes are that is why called as thermomechanical processes. So, one of the very important process in this is called rolling. So, it can be cold rolling or hot rolling ok. So, right now as we because we are discussing thermomechanical processes. So, we will be discussing about hot rolling. So, basically you the there is a reduction or when you impose a strain there is going to be a reduction in the cross sectional area ok. And uh, then there will be a lot of microstructural changes going to happen ok as you can see here also the uh, original material had uh, some coarse grain structure as you can see here ok. Uh, it is heated so that is why it is shown as uh, red color ok. And uh, then you are uh, allowing it to go through these rolls. So, these are the rolls here ok. And uh, then the material as you can see there is a reduction in the thickness after the deformation. So, you have imposed some deformation. Okay, so, initially whatever you get from rolling these so, after plastic deformation these will be elongated grains ok. Then because of if, if the strain is sufficient and if the temperature is sufficient ok you may have recrystallization process in the material at the temperature ok and then after recrystallization there will be growth of new fine grains. Okay, so, basically the idea is that you have to refine the microstructure and break the coarse grain structure 
also so there will be multiple stages so first stage you will be you would like to break the dendritic structure then again you have done some annealing you have some coarse grain structure okay then you go for fine grain structure and so on and then you will go for cold rolling processes later on if you see a, a, a typical uh, deformation process during hot rolling okay so basically i can say that here i am talking about the strain distribution okay so you can see that uh, on x axis uh, uh, on x axis you have uh, the uh, along the rolling direction okay and y axis is where you have the uh, the thickness of the material okay and well, this is some work i have taken from uh, journal called journal of material processing technology okay so basically what they are trying to show here is that what is the strain distribution at different stages during the rolling okay so you can see that roll must have started somewhere from here okay and somewhere here the roll must be coming out so it, it must be something like this okay and uh, you can see that how much strain is introduced at different stages okay so from point 1 strain you are going up to point 61 strain okay and in the second uh, slide they are also trying to show you that what are the strain rate distribution okay and the values are given here so from a which is zero uh, strain rate to uh, 2.5 into 10 to the power 1 so 10 to the power 1 is written here so it is 2.5 into 10 to the power 1 so that kind of strain rate uh, uh, can be introduced during the deformation process so the strain maximum strain is in this particular case is around 0.61 and the maximum strain rate if uh, i can show you here okay it it is somewhere uh, let's say i is somewhere or maybe h h is somewhere here okay this is h that means the strain rate must be maximum around maximum here okay and this combination of temperature strain and strain rate is going to uh, bring out the change in the microstructure okay the next uh, process is uh, what we call as hot forging okay so very simple process basically you ram the there, there are two rams so this is a fixed ram then there is a, a, a moving ram here okay and then you kind of bang the material at a very high strain rate and the strain rate you can choose by depending upon the uh, rate at which you are hammering the material okay so it is a similar process like a hammer okay which you, you must have seen any black smith doing uh, next to a road who is working on material or steel okay that they are hammering the material so this is a similar process okay only thing now in this case the machines must be very large and these are in few thousand tons okay and the process can be two type okay either it can be an open die forging or closed die forging okay as you can see here it is a closed die forging the material is confined in a particular die and it is kind of forged okay in an open die forging basically it is very simple you have a fixed ram some material is kept here okay and the top ram is hammering it okay so as you can see here there is no confinement uh, uh, in in the, in this direction okay so material is free to flow in this direction so whatever shape it is going to take it can take whereas in this case you can see that there are die around it so it is going to give a particular shape to the to the billet okay so a preheated metal billet will be kept and then you will hammer with the uh, with the upper ram uh, and material will be kept on the lower ram so it it can be done at a repeated cycle so it it won't be a one short process you keep hammering till the material take the shape of the die again people have done uh, studies uh, some experimental some uh, fem simulations okay just to show that what kind of strain rate and uh, temperature you can attain in the in the material 
Okay. As you can see the effective strain is plotted here and the color coding is given here. Okay. So, blue is very low strain, red is very high strain and they are trying to show that where the high strain is achieved. Okay. So, basically idea is that in the same deformation process you achieve different level of strain and strain rate in the material. Okay. So, uh, understanding of thermomechanical process is very important to know whether you are reaching a deformation condition which can introduce a defect in the material. Okay. So, we have to be very careful about that. Also you can see that there is a temperature profile here. So, rest of the billet as you can see is still at a high temperature, uh, it is around 1100, uh, 1120 degrees Celsius okay. and the blue color is uh, where the ram comes in contact with the billet. Okay. So, because ram must be at low temperature compared to billet, you can see that lot of heat must have been dissipated from there. So, that is why you see this all low temperature region on the top. Okay. So, that also we have to account for that there can be temperature variation in the same material, strain variation, strain rate variation. Okay. And uh, uh, again they have compared the experimental and uh, their modeling results. So, they have plotted a stroke on the x axis okay, and load on y axis in turns okay, and trying to show that how the load variation takes place as a function of a stroke. So, before forging the material had this kind of shape, after forging it became something like this. Okay. Then another very uh, important process uh, that is called hot extrusion. Uh, you must uh, have seen some of this kind of process at home also in kitchen. There is one uh, dish which we make uh, in some part of the country which is called chakli. Okay. So, basically you put uh, dough of uh, gram floor okay, and then, uh, then you have to kind of force it through an opening okay, and then it takes that shape. Okay. Similar process here you have a small opening here. Okay. Of course, you have to give some angle to the material so that you can introduce the strain in the material at, di at different levels. Okay. So, strain will increase as material is going through the die okay. and uh, cross sectional area, a large cross sectional area material can be reduced to a very small cross sectional area and in that process you will be introducing lot of strain in the material. And uh, some uh, uh, zones are shown here. So, A is basically your primary deformation zone, okay. B is your secondary deformation zone basically where uh, it comes in contact with the ram and the, uh, and the boundary of the die. C is where you will have frictional affected peripheral zone. So, material will be kind of rubbing against the die wall. So, there will be lot of frictional, friction, frictional effect there and frictional heating also. Then you have a dead metal zone somewhere here okay, where there would not be any deformation. Okay. So, deformation will be constrained only in this part of the material and E is the billet zone okay, or billet core. Uh, small a alphabets are showing a is your container okay where in which you are putting your die okay b a is your die here c is a die holder okay d is dummy block okay so this is your dummy block here and e is stern and f is extrusion uh, uh, happening which is happening through the uh, through the die. Okay. If you want to see uh, how the metal flow during this kind of extrusion process, okay, th this is one example again taken from a literature and you can see that how actually what they have done, they have started the extrusion process, stopped it, took the billet out okay, and cut it in half. Okay, and then they are trying to show that how the material flow has taken place. Okay, you, as you can see here, this is the dead zone. Okay. You do not see any microstructural change here. Here you can actually see the material flow direction, the flow lines, how the 
grains are flowing. Okay. Here actually is where you have a very intense shear zone, lot of shear strain is going to be imposed in this part of the die which is just where it is going to come out as you can see orifice is just somewhere here. So, it is just before coming out it experiences maximum strain here okay, and lot of flow lines you can see are going like this. Okay. So, you can see that uh, in, in the same extrusion again there are lot of variation in the uh, microstructure and the strain strain rate okay. and at the at the edge of the billet where it is coming in the contact with the die okay, or, or the container uh, because of the frictional effect you can see lot of coarse grain is there the temperature must be high at that point. Okay. Now, if you want to see the changes in microstructure, some very nice beautiful pictures are here okay, again taken from a literature and you can see uh, now they have also shown uh, microstructure and with the their orientation information. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe you will not be able to see this uh, key here, I can write a bigger number here it is 111 this is 101, this is 001 okay. and this is for 001 inverse pole figure map. Okay. So, basically what these colors are showing which is given as a key here. So, if any grain is red color that means the 001 axis of that grain is coming out. Okay. So, it is coming out from the surface here. If it is a green colored map that means the 110 axis is coming out, if it is blue color then it is uh, basically 111 axis is coming out. Okay. So, you can see again very nicely how the variation is taking place, how the orientation of the grain is changing during the deformation process. So, this is your extrusion direction is shown here by the arrow okay. and you can see at this point you have very high uh, values of strain. Okay, and then somewhere here okay. uh, I, I am not sure about the strain values because it is not shown here. Okay. But what I am you can see very nicely is that how the orientation is changing okay. there are different zones of uh, orientations. So, basically the texture is changing during the deformation process. Similarly, uh, another very nice example of variation in the microstructure because of the variation in the strain in the uh, extruded billet. So, this particular microstructure is at the center of the billet and this one is at the surface. Okay. So, you can see that in the center you have a different type of grains okay, only blue and red ones okay. uh, and at the surface if you see the microstructure is more refined because maybe the strain is higher there. Also, you can see a very coarse grain structure here by this green color grain, a very big grain is there okay. and the rest of the them are very fine that means more strain is seen by the surface and less strain is seen by the center. Okay. So, again a very nice microstructural variation you can see in the same extruded billet. This is the effect of increasing, increasing the extrusion ratio okay. that is the uh, ratio between the what is uh, coming out after extrusion and what is you are putting in. Okay. And as you can see as the extrusion ratio is increasing because you are putting more strain, okay. the grains are very coarse here, big big grains are seen. Okay. Again only two type of grains, one is red one that means 001 axis is coming out or blue one that means 111 axis is coming out. So, combination of 001 uh, grains and 111 grains okay. and then as you are increasing the extrusion ratio you can see the microstructure refinement which is taking place and also you can see that the number of red color grains are increasing. So, that means you are introducing a texture also in the material a crystallographic texture okay, which gives a it, it, a it a predominantly one type of uh, orientation to the grains. Now, this is a typical processing of steel. Okay. And uh, just to show you that when you do a processing in industry, what are the different stages of 
processing you the material has to go through ok. So, as you can see the deformation or the material is starting somewhere from 1150 degree Celsius ok and this hedged regions here these are the regions where you have imposed strain in the material ok. So, as you can see understand that these are all continuous processes ok. So, you heat the material and then it goes through the different stages of deformation ok. So, uh, as you can see these hedged regions here, here, here these are the regions where you have put the strain. So, if, if suppose there are number of rolling mills are there. So, first rolling mill has introduced a strain here, another one here and another one here. Also very important to see here is that because you have heated material at, at one point ok and then it is going through these stages, the temperature is continuously dropping ok. So, this is a, uh, 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 a steel ok. So, also the temperatures different critical uh, temperatures are also shown here A R 3 is here, A R 1 is here and this is around 950 degree Celsius above that. So, which is T R means where it recrystallization can happen in the austenite phase. So, first recrystallization region will be here. So, you start with a very coarse grain ok. Then the recrystallization is happening ok. So, this is my first recrystallization region ok. And then you can see that it is the temperature is continuously coming down ok. And this is a non recrystallization region that means there cannot be any recrystallization in this particular region ok. And uh, then again you are putting a strain at different stages ok. And, uh, then the microstructure is something like this after uh, deformation. So, deformation in, in, in the gamma phase that means the austenite phase ok. Again the temperature is continuously dropping and then you are putting deformation here ok. So, these are deformed alpha grains now because you are coming into the alpha region alpha plus gamma region ok. So, you can see that uh, the deformation the actual thermomechanical processing in industry is very complex. Your temperature is continuously dropping ok and because temperature is continuously changing uh, also the phase uh, or phases in the material are changing ok. So, you start with the austenite phase ok then you come into a, f a f uh, two phase region where the austenite plus ferrite phase both will be there and then you go into the ferrite region also maybe ok where the only ferrite grains will be there. They have different crystal structure ok their deformation behavior will be different ok. So, there are lot of uh, uh, microstructural information and this kind of deformation processes have to be combined ok to get a very good uh, understanding of the thermomechanical processing. Okay. And also as uh, we have already seen that uh, we have to see the temperature strain and strain rate ok. And at the same time now as you can see here there will be information about phases. Now, phases can be of different type ok. If we take only metallic material most of them will be only in this re region ok. So, maybe some phase will be BCC, some phase will be FCC, some phase will be HCP ok. And they will be having different type of deformation uh, processes ok at the same temperature strain and strain rate. Also we have seen earlier that the strain, strain rate and temperature will also be different in the same material ok. So, if you look at all this uh, condition or all these scenarios, you, you can understand that the whole thermomechanical processing is a very complex uh, process and understanding of that is very essential for a defect free final product ok. And uh, to understand that ok, you have to do, do lot of uh, for example, if you are putting an any new alloy in the market ok, you have designed a new alloy ok or you are working on a new uh, uh, alloying system ok. So, for each of these alloying system or alloy which you have developed you have to first devise a, a, a optimum thermomechanical processing 
to get a, a grain size which you want, to get a texture which you want okay, and to get the strength and ductility in the final material which you want. Okay. And for getting that you have to control all the deformation processes before that. Okay. So, I think with this uh, lecture you must have uh, uh, been able to understand the complexity and the uh, requirement to understand the whole thermomechanical process uh, uh, the interplay of different uh, mechanical uh, parameters strain strain rate and temperature and microstructural parameter like phase and uh, their their behavior under those uh, conditions okay thank you